I invite you to join us. Just, um, so, um, just to give you a short introduction. So, Genius Cafe is a co-working space. Well, one of the uh, 50 which we which we planned. Uh, it's an amazing place, which is part of Entrepreneurs uh, Institute and Entrepreneur Results. Uh, we are working together to uh, connect and to inspire entrepreneurs worldwide. And we have a series of inspiring events taking place, as the one which we are going to have today. Um, the one which we have today is called Genius Talk, as you already know. And and we have amazing guests with us. Uh, her name is Agnieszka, Agnes. So Agnes has got how many? Like more than over a decade of experience in doing business development and running more or less. More or less. So more or less. Uh, Three years in Bali, um, she she was in charge of the doing HR and the recruitment in um, for a couple of companies, and she's uh, she's a well recognized a HR uh, headhunter professional. Um, she's doing this for many companies and uh, hired like hundreds of people over her career, and and she has got an amazing approach towards tool called LinkedIn, which uh, most of you already know. Uh, but what is really interesting is that most of the people are using LinkedIn not fully professionally and not utilizing all the power and all the amazing uh, opportunities which may arise. And today uh, Agnieszka is going to give us a um, couple of highlights about how to use LinkedIn as a pro. Merci. Thank you, thank you. You were showing something. The mic doesn't really work. Now it works, yeah. Okie dokie. Um, so yeah, S so far I was sticking to digital nomads in Ubud actually for a while and I noticed that uh, really not many people somehow are using LinkedIn. And I wondered why, like all social media is so, so super um, utilized and LinkedIn is underestimated. I figure out that it's probably because of this flow that, oh, we're escaping nine to five, now it's freedom, less corporate stuff, no need to dress up for work anymore and so on. So maybe LinkedIn was uh, a bit of this shelf for, uh, for people. But I find it extremely useful tool, not only for recruiters, but generally for networking. I really hate microphones. Is it necessary for, for, for the heritage? Okay. Um, yeah, so I, they're kind of like... Um, cool, so um, that's my lovely profile. Um, and let's start a few things. Um, first of all, actually, to use a LinkedIn profile when I'm, when I'm working with the either entrepreneurs or uh, business people or someone who is looking for a job. We're actually starting with their CV, which is a bit annoying for people somehow. Quite often those uh, professionals who were referred and referred and they felt like, no, 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 I'm not, not going to need CV ever in my life again. Yet, um, it's a very interesting exercise. It's part of your professional branding, no? and uh, part of uh, sort of defining yourself through those keywords, which are just mandatory to put in your LinkedIn profile, which later make you actually searchable. It doesn't matter if it's a new next company that would like to onboard you or another partner who is looking for someone to work with. Um, so, yeah, Running through your CV, digging it out and uh, freshing, refreshing it a bit is uh, strongly recommended before you try to play out with LinkedIn. And later I will, I will show you how, though just a few more things. Um, if you will actually uh, put those keywords, think of uh, what are your biggest strengths are and uh, just see them across all the previous positions that you held. Uh, it becomes an automatic lead generator. 
you are actually searchable because people use uh, LinkedIn a lot just to to track some companies, to see who is working there, to see the competitors and so on. And uh, as I was preparing this presentation for Bali and everybody is so much into being here and working remotely. So yeah, it's also there. Uh, there are quite a few positions uh, remote. I, I did uh, this a few weeks ago for, for the sake of the presentation. And those were just from the day before the new positions. So there are plenty of them. And I put uh, very specific something uh, b according to, to my profile. So it was marketing, business development, management, something. And it gives quite a good result. So why not try, uh, moreover, uh, Work is not just work right now. Uh, we are not that much connected to the place or time. So actually position that people show up there can be just another project that you onboard. By sending your CV, of course, you, you get the authority points and you show yourself as a professional. But later on, you can actually switch into the discussion that it's not the only project that you're gonna have. It's more about uh, delivering and more about the task list and how much money you would like to get for that. So that's just another point of view how to see applying to a job. <clears throat> so yeah, that's more or less. And uh, while doing that, apart from the LinkedIn profile, um, it should be quite similar to your CV. Uh, yet, uh, as a recruiter, I just need to say a few things so other recruiters do not suffer. <laughs> uh, it's better to keep the formatting simple. Uh, of course, people might reformat it or might put it into some kind of CRM. So the less graphical, the better. I, I know that there are designers and... and uh, urban designers and graphic designers and they have to do it in a really pretty way but the less less is more actually also funny thing name in file i see all the time just tossing those hundreds of cvs every day i see that people start uh, naming the file with cv and i guess like 98 percent and then when i'm trying to research it once again Everybody starts like this, and I remember people, uh, as most of us do, by the name. So it will also make easier to find you again if you uh, name your first and last name CV and put something about you, like uh, uh, your industry or the area that you would like to work, or maybe that you would like to work remotely. And just keeping it in the name will make you le best, better better, easier to find, let's say. Um, I know it might be just uh, one or few percent of uh, your plus for your luck in the future, but why lose it? It's handy. And uh, important thing that is quite often missing, also among my friends who are looking for a job and uh, asking for some uh, career strategic advice, they skip summary. Summary seem to be a bit um, unnatural thing. I'll show one example of mine, my CV. Uh, pom pom, here it is. No? So summary is usually like a few, like five to 10 sentences written in third person uh, of your story. It's basically like a very short story of your success and where you are right now and where you would like to be. But from what I see, it's extremely difficult to compliment yourself in those few sentences. Nope, doesn't work. Oh well. Yeah, it's there. And uh, this blurb can be used in many points. For example, you are one of the uh, consultants or interns, or one of 
few in the group who should be presented to a manager. So the person will basically just copy past and uh, give this nice blurb for someone else to approve you as a candidate or not. In the other scenario, someone else will have to write it for you and those will be less uh, pretty and uh, probably less accurate. So let's do this work for, for all your potential partners, employers and uh, <coughs> coordinators and just keep it there so uh, it can be reused easily. Anyway, just a quick look. Mine is quite simple. Uh, from the oldest positions to the newest, uh, from the newest to the oldest, and usually the education is on the very end. Uh, somehow, yeah, the most important is actually uh, last position that mm, we held. Now I want to go back to the presentation. Is it all right? <laughs> yeah, I can. Awesome. So just to have, I, I want you to leave this meeting with something tangible, with uh, something that you can actually use and that would be the summary. I would like to make, yes we have actually, four people, so it's enough for making pairs. Uh, it's a small exercise actually to create this type of summary which you can later use either in your CV or your, in your LinkedIn. Uh, so the first part is about interviewing each other. You'll have five minutes to speak about yourself. Uh, and you see a few questions that, that can be asked, like what was the place uh, where you utilized your talents the best? Or which, next, uh, mm, which would be the perfect next position? Or where you were the, mo the happier and... and uh, it's more about looking for those high points. So you have five minutes to talk to your partner about that. Then we switch. And then the task is to actually write this small blurb about your partner in those five to maximum 10 sentences with starting with some very tangible things like, like this person has this amount of years doing being in this or that industry and uh, or having these aspirations or if someone is just starting his or her career uh, having these projects or these hobbies and interests um, in the pocket so shall we start will you participate Slav please <laughs> dig into LinkedIn and look for various opportunities that are hidden there so yep what's the best tool to, to get a new gig, new job, new partner. What's the most important? Yeah, as a hint, it's not, it's not CV. It's, the slide is kind of nice, networking. Face-to-face <laughs> -face communication, of course, and all kind of relationships that you have nourished uh, in whatever form. Um, that's why LinkedIn is, uh, due to different researches, is on the top in terms of business-to-business -business communication. And um, that's why I was surprised that it's so underestimated. And it's quite actually easy to drive uh, traffic to your own website, just uh, doing it it's strategically. Uh, meaning that you will be posting whatever your content is. You can keep um, raising your authority by posting informative things on uh, uh, LinkedIn in your page, in your profile, just taking people to finish the topic to read from your blog and then uh, or website. And there you can actually proceed with selling. Just selling doesn't really work on LinkedIn. It's not that good. It's better to inform and educate people. And uh, again, uh, there is whole such thing as social selling and LinkedIn is even trying to educate people and distributes all kind of guides how to do the social selling, which basically means tapping into your network and trying to talk to people to sell something. And I got into a huge discussion where uh, people were annoyed 
with the fact that someone is connecting with you and a few minutes later buy this, buy that, buy do this, do that. Um, of course, it's, it's not a very good way to proceed. The way I do, I um, expand my network all the time. Of course, I'm, I will try to pitch, sell, connect people and so on in a while most probably offer them job or ask them if they want some candidates. But uh, meanwhile, I, I at least show that I'm interested anyhow. So I go to their profile. I like, I see what they, I just take a look what they do. I like what they posted or any articles. I just involve, in, engage with their activity out there. And doing it for a while actually makes, creates this feeling that I'm not just someone out of the blue wanting something from their people. And quite often they actually, by because I'm conducting some actions uh, within a few weeks, for example, endorsing their skills or, or just commenting something, they are getting interested in uh, who am I. And as LinkedIn has this option of seeing who looked up, who looked you up, they are looking up my profile and coming up with, uh, let's do this, or, or would you like to chat? Mm. And yeah, uh, again, LinkedIn is on the top in terms of uh, um, marketing initiatives, but uh, in, in terms of providing uh, um, professional content, which is converting. Um, Meaning that it should be only informative. Just don't even try to, to sell anything. Usually those articles are not being touched. And uh, somehow people who are just being generous, giving away quite a few tips. Uh, sometimes I see that some consultants are basically giving away their know-how. But uh, through this, people are driven to them and uh, would like to stay in touch with them and pay them actually for, for their work, even if it's the manual is already there. Uh, it's, it's all not a rocket science, but uh, yeah, just try to be generous. That's my message. And another lovely feature, uh, very useful, is mailing list. Um, LinkedIn is a very uh, convenient way to start your mailing list. It actually, um, so I, I gather 15,000 people and among them I can select them. So actually LinkedIn is letting me to download the whole Excel, nicely segregating people with first, last name, the position, the company that they work with and their email. Uh, and that makes me makes really easy to create different mailing campaigns um, and uh, collect more people from the same industry as LinkedIn's uh, in, um, engine is suggesting if I'm searching for digital marketer uh, in Asia Pacific or in Australia, it, it will start suggesting me people uh, to take a look from the similar either geographical uh, area or similar industry. So what can you do eventually? You can, uh, uh, quite often, the best digital asset is the mailing list. It's nice to start your own. And uh, as the title is the most important thing that makes people actually open those emails, it's easy to create them as now you have uh, the information about who they are in terms of uh, their position and where they work. Um, so yeah, try this. Uh, and it's also an interesting space that it's kind of, we when we enter LinkedIn, it feels like I'm in the office. Uh, so I've been asked by um, um, all people who work as consultants, as freelancers or coaches, uh, that, uh, that it's not for me because I'm offering someone something that will influence their life directly, that it's not a good space, I'd rather do Facebook. But 80% of people use their private emails to launch their LinkedIn account. So all of a sudden you are become, you're like in this space, a bit professional, but more on the side of uh, someone's personal life. So it's absolutely fine to craft some uh, solutions, suggestions, uh, and send through, through this mailing list. Um, what's next? 
keywords. As we have the blurb, I hope it has quite a few keywords that um, you could think of that are most important, because that's how recruiters or people who are looking for partners or specialists will search for. They'll basically, like I, I did an example, is a digital marketing B2B. I wanted someone from the energy industry and someone in Singapore. And of course, I got the guy, he was on, totally on the top. And this is the free search, because LinkedIn has all of those type of memberships, uh, w which cost some coin per month, but this is available to anyone. So that's what I see. I try to search in a different way. And of course, the first hit was with people who place the most important few words, digital marketing, B2B, and they kept it in the uh, description. That's where I have the, I'm recruiting energy talents. Uh, and it's, that space has uh, probably enough for 10 words, at least, if you put them nicely. And that's the recruiter view. Um, as I go, uh, for example, I found the specialist, and I have like 10 of them. No time to read carefully, but I selected the proper words, so that's what I do. And that's what LinkedIn is doing for me. Uh, all those digital parts will be highlighted through all his CV. And that's how we select people for the shortlist. I just take a look and I see how, what is the density of uh, keywords that I need. If it's quite high, okay, I'll talk to him later. <clears throat> Uh, probably not in the first batch. And it's a shame because uh, uh, when the market is, when the market is tough, and I know that there are those geniuses, but they, I need to dig them out, and that's literally what I do. I give them, I suspect that they work for that company, so they must have learned how to do that. So I give them a call and bother them till, the, till they make their CV properly. Because again, I have colleagues in the in the Singaporean agency who are also very short with the time. So if I bring them shitty CV saying, oh, no, no, this guy is cool. No, thank you. <laughs> so um, it has to be written. Oh, well. Ah, um, uh, yeah, learning part. I enjoyed it quite a lot. It's... Uh, mm, it's in a paid version, but you can, can get it for free for 30 days. LinkedIn has actually so many uh, well-crafted online courses. I was surprised. And it's just cool to, to dig into it for a while, watch them. They have small quizzes, and they actually put those certification information into your profile. And then it's also a keyword for you. So it's, it's a nice uh, feature. Um, and just one thing, uh, to be careful with your profile. Really, when you s put your blurb in place, you have this perspective of you as a professional. So try to digest information f having those glasses on you. So if you are a communication specialist, pay attention to what you're commenting, what you're liking, because all this thing will basically sit in your profile not endlessly, till they will be pushed by the other things, but if I'm not active, those things that I just liked, I didn't share, but anyone who will get into my profile will still see the, the latest things, which kind of tag me somehow. And uh, yeah, I have your emails. That's great. Um, I have quite a few nice guides uh, depending on your needs, either you are hiring or you need some kind of marketing tips or selling tips. Let me know. I have like really 10 of them. Those are, let's say, on the top of the pile. So if you would like, I'm happy to forward them to you and let me know if you have any questions. Summary of the part that you've read and forwarded, 
and then achievements. Every time you have some kind of position, I'm sure you have achieved a lot. And uh, quite often people will feel like, oh, but it's right. So while I was working for the company, we got from this point to that point, from 50 customers to 350 customers. But the, the thing be, yeah, but for example, you were a marketing person, so it was a huge uh, uh, part of your work that, that happened. And especially those numbers, the growth in percentage, uh, everything is just tangible to be in uh, achievements. And that's how it's usually read. You come on, and then, okay, achievements, nice numbers, nice numbers, nice numbers. Then somebody looks at the good mix, for example, when somebody is applying for general manager. So good if that person was a sales one, good if, if he or she was uh, doing some development, some this or that. Okay, perfect mix. Let's let's talk to them. How about people who are in the creative industry or in the investment process falling into the category of like a regular staff? Because you know it's different when you're you know hiring somebody as a and or as a business development professional. So give me an example. Creative house. Who was that would be? A singer? A porn star? Director? <laughs> Director? Director of what? Movie director. Movie director. Is it easy? What's what's uh un huh? And that's the question. If you would like to be a power behind the scene and not bother, fine. I I, I can see such profiles. I can see that someone put this person last name and maybe one company. And I also it's a message for me that this person is... Sorry? <laughs> I uh, misbehave uh, with the microphone. Uh, and this is also a message for me that someone is that high of a specialist that they would rather to hide and pick who they're going to work with. When it comes... You can hear me, right? When it comes to creative stuff, this concept has led to cheaper and cheaper production. So major international companies are now searching these things for the lowest price they can possibly get on something that's un unreasonable. So it's a really it's a really strange way it's working. It's not really lowest price. Now I have a client who looks like I mean, have the all money in experience. the world and I'm just poking professionals saying like just tell me how much you want. No, but that's my direct experience with what I'm seeing coming off these these platforms. That the production is just being pushed to the It doesn't floor. mean anything because all it means is numbers now. Which is a really strange concept that will hopefully blow up soon. <laughs> yeah, because words are better than numbers. So yeah, you said measure. that you are difficultly searchable, but will it hurt if you would put yourself mm. out there with keywords mm. and there is a nice place because there is embedded blog. Uh, you can see that there is this relax, uh, nothing is under control. That's just a picture of one of the articles. You can basically keep them there, including video. And video is a next thing probably for LinkedIn as well as uh, I yeah, see I that people are... I've got, I've got stuff on there, but I haven't got a CV like you suggested. I'll go home and work on it. But CV. what what's your uh, what would you like to achieve? Would you like to have more customers, or you would like to be a special artist? I got enough customers. Under uh, estimated and uh, so I got, on. I got enough customers. It's good. So, so good on you. Yeah. Give away the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> and how about uh, if someone starts? his or her career, uh, like, like uh, completing internship and not having too much experience whatsoever. But you always have some kind of project, some, some, some extra curriculum stuff that you used to do in uni. Uh, so you put it all out there. And it doesn't matter if it was a month or two months, it's worth mentioning. Uh, there is also a part for, for volunteering, for cooperation with the organization. I, I'm not a fan of fake it till you make it, but uh, it's worth mentioning. And uh, I don't know people who did nothing. And they're like, I have just a degree. No, you don't. I'm sure you, you did plenty of courses. You volunteered somewhere. You tried some kind of creative project and uh, you dish it out. 
is it useful to put information in several languages or just in English or? Uh, it depends on the market. I spoke to a German speaking marketer. He has, uh, is, and he's, he works for German markets, so of course for some international gigs he keeps English one, but uh, German is his basic. Yeah. So, well, maybe. <laughs> don't have a question thank you so much for your time and attention i hope it helped for the future and uh, prosperity <laughs> thank you Maybe you need some you someone for video yes, exposure, uh, yes, like. Yes, exactly. Not all, all of them are.